Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Road to the Horse, Mr. Brian White. I'm really excited to be here. Um, lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down. Um, i just tell you a quick story. Uh, I came to this last year for the first time as a spectator, and uh, I was inspired by the technicians. Um, something inside me just said I need to be a part of this thing. So. Uh, I was asking about it and a couple of volunteers said, oh, you probably won't be able to do that and they probably wouldn't. And I was like, uh-oh, you just fueled me. So I uh, tracked Tootie down and I said, uh, I'd love to be a part of this thing. And then I remember, and she remembers exactly where we were standing, it was over there. And she, she said, give me a couple months to decompress. And I said, I got you, no worries. And I uh, made a video and then I sent it to her and then I followed up and I remember emailing her say you might not remember me but she said no I remember you and I knew that you were going to be part of our family and I was like cool because because I really want to share how special these dogs are and what they could do if you have the inclination to do it um, this is my first dog scoop and uh, he took me, whew, I won't even get into the journey we've been on, but uh, uh, I don't know what he's looking for. He's shaking. There's no sheep in here yet, dude. But anyway, um, he, he's just like the first love. So um, he's, ending, he's entering the end of his career pretty much. He's pretty much retired. But uh, I just, you know, he took me a long, long, sorry, a long way. So um, what I'm going to do is Tootie, Tootie tells me um, she has a volunteer because I needed a volunteer. Um, so um, I need a volunteer to kind of, oh, I'll show you when they get out here and the sheep get out here. And here they come. Um, we're going to have a little fun. Come here, Debbie. <laughs> what am I doing? This is Debbie Sullivan. She works very hard for Road to the Horse. Probably couldn't do this thing without her. But uh, what we're going to do is I want you to... We're gonna get those sheep and go over by those cones. And I want you to make them do figure eights around the cone so without a dog. Huh? I'll lead them in a figure eight. Well, you hope so. You might have to push them too. So I'll get them over by there. And you know what I mean? Yeah, figure eights like this through the cones. She, all sheep around the cone. All, okay? Where are you going? Where are you going? We, lie down. We, we, here. We, shh. This one, lie down. Come. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. So, there they are. I want to just show you <laughs> how valuable a dog is. You got to get around to the heads and get them. Scoop. <laughs> He's like, nah. Lie down. Lie down. Come on, Deb. <laughs> Come by. Come by. Get around. Get around. Come on. Now head them back this way. Go around them. Head them back. Go around. I'm training her. Look at this. Right here. Road to the Debbie. 
Come on, at least get them back to the cones. Okay, I'll give you a little help. Come by, shh, come by, lie down, come by. Here they are. Is that it? Come by, shh, come, lie down, lie down. See if I can do it for you. We, we, we lie down. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Come on. So I'm going to give Scoop a rest, the old man, for a minute. And we're going to, they followed me. Um, I'm going to give him a rest for a minute. I'm going to bring out Dude. Dude is 11-month-old puppy. Good boy. Um, that uh, has... Um, has never been on sheep. Well, I'll take that back, four times. Um, and uh, I named him Dude, I call him Duder. That's his nickname. But uh, we're gonna see what we can do with him in the round pen, and I'm, a, I'm calling it the little mini road to the dog. So we're gonna see what we can get out of him right here. Come here, Scoop. Shh, come on, that'll do. Come on, come on, come on. We, we, we. Come, come, come. Shh, shh. Lie down, lie down, lie down. He's not hearing me. The deal is with this dog is he was so right and so natural. He showed me what this was like and I'm paying a little bit for it now because <laughs> he overrides me a little bit because I let him be right. But, but I could still, we've trialed many miles and won some trials and he's my best friend. So anyways, we'll put him away here. Come on, scoop. And you'll be seeing him tomorrow in the match off. I don't know, though, the way he's acting right now. We'll see. But um, so I'm going to just keep holding him. This, this is my pen wrangler, my wife. Um, she, uh, so I'm just going to, I'm going to use this long line, but I'm going to, this is one of my only tools and a whistle. Um, this is a rolled up dog food bag with duct tape. They're for sale at my booth for $39.90. No, I'm just kidding. Um, up there is our booth behind the red tractors. If you want to talk dogs, come and see me. And if you want to buy some cool art, come see my wife. Shameless plug. So I just do that. That's what I use it for. Um, right now, this dog's pretty much untouched as far as doing this with him. 
Um, as you can see, he, I think I, I just put him on sheep enough, enough to, uh, and my long lines, my long line is four leashes. I forgot my long line, but you can purchase this too. Anyway, so right now, look at, he's just pulling me to the sheep, right? He was. So I'll start already saying, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Come here, come here, good boy. Yeah. This will help you even with your dog if everything else you've tried, treats don't work. You can just, that'll do, that'll do. Come here, that'll do. Good boy. See, it, it just snaps their mind for a second and then you, and you don't want to ever get mad at them to come to you. Who's going to come to a ra raving maniac, right? So, and I'm guilty. I've done it. I've, I've made a lot of mistakes, in, uh, but I've learned from them fairly quickly. Um, dude likes to eat poop, horse poop. That'll do. That'll do. Come here. That'll do. Good boy. So we're going to give this a whirl and see, uh, see how it goes. That'll do. That'll do. Come here. That'll do. Come here. Good boy. Um, we're going to give it a whirl and see how it goes. Um, I'll be sweaty after this, trust me. Uh, I did a little bit of it with him yesterday. See, I mean, I don't normally let my dogs go through the gate like that before me. But I, he's a puppy, remember? And I did, what I want to do, what fuels this whole thing is balance. And all I'm looking to do is get him to balance the sheep to me. Lie down. Uh, he, he, whoa, okay. Um, lie down, lie down. I haven't even be, been teaching him lie downs really, a little bit here and there off a of sheep, so that's, a, that's good. But uh, um, what I was saying about balance is I also want to get him hooked on, I'll call that chocolate. I want to get him hooked on the chocolate. I want him to get to those sheep and work those sheep bad. And once I got him, once he wants those sheep, then I've got him, you know, and then I start, then I start to, it's like I liken it to um, whittling on a stick. I just start whittling, whittling. I don't take too much because you can't put it in if you take it out. I mean, a lot of similarities to the horses, I think. I'm just learning about horses. And I, to be honest with you, a mentor of mine told me, he said, with the horses, you're, I'm, I've got a trainer, I'm learning like I'm brand new. I rode 30 times in my life. But he told me, he said, Brian, it's going to make you a better dog handler. And it already has as far as when I'm training them, I, I, I use, the, I call it the ATM method. I go to the ATM and I, I, I ask, I tell, and then I make them. But I used to go straight to tell. And then, you know, I might just slide on to make, but which I do have to sometimes. So um, he's being very patient. Um, but uh, so the horses have made me more sensitive to what I'm doing with the dogs. I mean, it's different because horses are preyed upon and these dogs are prey driven, right? So uh, just, just a little leg to the side doesn't, you know, they're trying to get to those because they, hey, quit eating poop. Um, so they can uh, eat them. So anyway, let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. Let's see how it goes. He's got a lot of dirt in his mouth. That's good. Okay. Now, We'll see, if I get loud, I'm sorry, because I'm just, I might turn this off, but I think maybe you want to hear. Um, is it too loud? Hey, hey. See, this is balance. What I want him to do is get, get to the heads and turn them towards me. Shh, shh, and I'll lie down.
Hey, hey. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is just get him wanting to bring those sheep to me. You know, he's kind of pushing them past me. That's fine. When I go over here, he should go that way. He, he wanted to. Hey, hey. Lie down. See, this... So when I'm starting a dog, when I, I mean, he's, this is as fresh as it gets. I mean, um, so lie, stay. He doesn't know any of this. Lie down, get back. Hey, lie down, lock. Lie down, lie, lie down, lie down, lie down. And calling him off, lie down, lie down. What, lie down, lie down, lie down. That'll do, come here. See, he's not, he's not re ready for that. Lie down, lie down. That'll do, dude, come here. All right. Lie down, lie down. Lie down, lie down, come here. That'll do. Good boy. Just that little try, right? Like with the horses, little try. He wanted to come to me. Good boy, you're, you're awesome. Um, so when I'm doing this balancing, as he starts progressing, I'll start putting a, a word to the direction he's going. Just by manipulating the sheep, I know if I go over here, he's going to go there. So I just say, come by, come by. If he's going this way, I say, way to me. I usually just cut it down and say, we, we. Uh, oh, you know that. Um, and then when he's on balance, when he comes to balance, I'll say steady. And that's where I want him. Because he's on balance, he's there where I want him to steady up. Steady means start applying pressure, but with some pace. And I might not get the pace right away, but when I, you know, when you're trialing and you're trying to hit, I guess I should tell you that I do big field trials where the sheep are five to 800 yards away. There's five. You send your dog up and you, you grab the sheep and you fetch them. And then you take them through a course and the total drive length is probably, probably uh, 450 yards. And uh, so, um, I've got to have steady. Steady's like your brakes, but not a stop, but just like tapping the brakes, tapping the brakes. So I want to start that all right here, right as soon as I can and build upon that. But, you know, as they, as they start learning, I want the foundation to be solid because they will start to, they'll revert back to what you taught them in the beginning. You know, if they're out on an island 800 yards away, I hope that the fetching and the balance work I've done pays off because he'll bring me sheep, even if he can't hear me. But uh, so each, each element is like a building block to making a good trial dog. And, and trialing is different than work, where trialing is very precise. Each step matters sometimes. I mean. The outrun, what I, when I, he would go around the sheep, it's starting right there too. And you just keep increasing that, you know, by, you know, 20 yards. Once they've got 20 yards, 30 yards, maybe 40. Maybe push it a little, see if he'll go farther. If he doesn't, you come back. And you just get it solid, you know, like as solid as you can because like I said, they revert back to it. So, um, and I've learned, you know, I've learned so much about the heart of these dogs. I mean, this dog's a puppy, basically, and he's just like wanting to bring me sheep, you know. They, they amaze me all the time, their heart. It just, you know, it inspires me. I mean, my dogs, that dog over there and a couple of the others, they, they've made me a better person, you know, because they're like a mirror, you know. I'll meet people and I'll see them with their dogs 
and uh, just let go of him for a second there. Um, I'll see them with their dogs, and I'll, I'll know a lot about them just by how they are and they interact with their dogs. Just kind of like horses, you know, the same thing. Probably when he starts, oh, <laughs> he hit that one on the face right there. That's a good thing. Not now because it's not threatening him, but I know he's not afraid to, you know. I'm not even having to use this, see, it gets, because he's being pretty good to these sheep. I mean, he's grabbing them, but steady, steady, steady. Hey. He doesn't have a very big bubble, so I don't really need this. I'm kind of in the process of feeling that out, like how much, how much pressure can he take? Lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down. That'll do, lie down. So I just wait on him again. No, he's not giving me the same. Lie down, lie down, lie down. That lie down, that'll do. That wasn't a real that'll do. <laughs> that was a call, I caught your butt. Anyway, that's just a little bit of how I started a dog, I hope. I hope, you're, I hope you're enjoying this because I'm sweating. Um, but I love, I love starting dogs. I mean, if I could just, I start a couple in the fall for myself. I don't really train them for other people because I, I have goals that I want to accomplish with my trialing and I want to stay focused on that. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a, driven person, so um, I always figure a goal without a plan is just a dream, right? If I'm not planning and I'm not trying to achieve it, then it, it's a dream. So I, uh, but I love watching the lights go on in these dogs. They'll just be like, they're so smart. You know, they learn on a third, three or four year old level, a human level, and they're you better put the right stuff in because you're going to have a hard time getting the wrong stuff out. So it's all, I mean, I've been hearing the horse guy. It's the same stuff. You know, make it right from the, and don't be, one of my trainers told me, he said, one of my mentors, he said, don't be lazy, Brian. Don't be a lazy trainer. This is not lazy, but I've seen people do this and just yell at their dogs. They don't know what you're asking, but if you're, you know, my theory is, if I, when I, once I can stop the dog, then I can, I'll, I'll stop him, I'll position myself, I'll put pressure on him. When, when they give me what I want, I release it. Pretty much that simple. Um, so, you know, he, he's just, I'm just letting him run amok a bit because I want him hooked on the chocolate. Then I can start to chisel on him and, and, uh, and make a dog out of him. And, and if he doesn't fit me, I'll get him to the best situation I can find because I just sold a dog recently that me and him just didn't gel and, and he, he, uh, he was a good dog. I mean, I trained him, he could do everything, but he lacked heart and, uh, and maybe it was just with me. My bubble can be big sometimes with the dogs and, and that's what I'm learning to down, get my bubble smaller, you know? And, and use it more effectively. I mean, I got so much to learn about this. Like when I leave here, I'll be going to my mentors for three or four days and I'm gonna open my top of my head up and he's gonna pour in information. And I, I soak it up like a sponge, you know? I, I, I'm, if you're not learning, if I'm not pushing myself to the limit in what I can, I'm not learning. And uh, thank you, ring person. Wife, Water. thank you, I'm getting a little dry. But um, so I hope you enjoyed that. That's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, I was a little bit worried about how rodeo it would get, but he was actually pretty, pretty good. I mean, not a lot of eye. You know, he didn't use his eye a lot. I'll show you dogs with some eye. Um, 
Sorry, I just got to catch my breath there a little bit. So, uh, I'll, uh, let's see, which one do you want to work? Which one wants to work? That's all you got? Bray, you want to work? You want to work? You <laughs> Fancy dancer. That's Gus. This is Bray. I'll work Bray a little bit. He's got a bit of eye. Um, uh, so I'll just start working him and I'll show you what I mean. Let me get rid of this. And uh, let me, uh, let me do a couple little adjustments here. Put up some of these. Lie down, lie down, lie down. He's four years old. He's my next. He's already, he qualified for the national finals last year. And uh, he's, uh, he's, I'll, I, heart, try, I mean, the dog just, and he's a hand, I mean, when I first got him, this, me and him had a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings, because <laughs> he would just be, like the first time I had him at home, he ran the sheep into the shed, sheep were bouncing off the walls, I'm like, what, dude, you can't do that, lie down, um, yeah, he could, he's a handful, let's just say that. See, I don't, I don't really... See, there's balance. He's going to balance. Well, he's going in another orbit, but that's all right. Because that thing got in his way, right? <laughs> this dog, he, I don't, he's kind of in the kennel crate at home. He doesn't live in with me because, well, he's a maniac. He never, he never settles down, you know. But look at how he's just keeping the sheep. See, he's a fully trained dog, but when you go trialing, when you go trialing, um, lie down, lie down. When you go trialing, you're doing driving and stuff like that and you lose their balance. And people think, oh, he's trained, I don't have to worry about it. Well, when I go home between trials, I just do that. I just start walking. I let him start feeling his sheep. I get him back on his sheep. Because I take him away a lot when I'm trying to hit panels and I'm trying to lay a run down and the pressure's on, and I love that. That's when I get focused, when it, the pressure is on. I want to be at the national finals on the final day with a chance to win it, you know? So I, I'll claim it here, that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, maybe I can keep coming back and share you that journey. I don't know if it's this dog, but I'll be there one day. I don't know which dog, come by, shh. Um, so this could be the one, he, I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know until, he, he's talented, I love him to death. But, uh, hi girls, thanks for coming. These cones will probably fall down. But anyway, he, because of his eye, he has a tendency, like eye, like stops sheep. And when you're going around a course, you don't want to stop sheep. So, see, he's lying down on his own. There's. That dog over there, Gus, when I work him, he doesn't, he never, he won't lie down until you tell him. But this dog, you don't want to lie down a lot. You have to pull your britches up and run him without stopping him. Now, when you're learning, there's a lot going on, you know, sheep, dog. I mean, there's a lot going on. And when I was new, I lied that dog over there, scooped down too much. And... He's, in spite of that, he did well. You know, in spite of the operator, you know, we're the problem most of the time. We're, we're the problem. And, and that's where I always, I look at myself. I leave my ego out of it. I look at myself and I go, 
what am I doing or what am I not doing because this ain't working. And uh, that's kind of how I, I keep it as simple as I can. You know, I, I was laying in bed last night and there was like three hours I couldn't sleep. And it was just all these, I, all the stuff that I've learned. And trust me, I've learned a pinky amount of what this is all about. But um, if I could have recorded my thoughts, I had some good stuff in there. I really did. And I'm trying to pull it out and pour it on you as best I can. But, uh, but anyways, this dog you don't want to put in defensive. Like this right here, if I walk him up, and the sheep are staring at him, that's defensive. Walk up, walk up, shh. See how he's not real willing to give me that. But if he's in the fetch position on their butts, that's why I don't put him around in their eye too much, in the eye of the sheep too much. I'm, I keep him on the shoulder. And I mean, I can drive with this dog wherever you wanna go. 600 yards away because I don't stop him and I don't let him get in the eye as best I can. Sometimes like here you have to, we, we, time, time, come by, time, we, time. This, lie down, lie down. This dog is beautiful to watch work. I mean, he's, Lie down, lie down, come by, come by. Time, time, we, time, time, walk up. <whistles> Let me turn this off for a second. He's, uh, he's hearing. We'll lie him down to get him a little, his flanks a little cleaner. When I'm running him the way with just steadies, you know, like you see him behind the sheep and he's just paddling along. That's, I sometimes I get mesmerized by that because it's, it's so cool, that prey, you know, stalking it. But anyway, um, I'll stop him to get him, like right now, I was just at a trial and I had a good run. I get to the pen, and he, uh, it gets tense at the pen, and he's, I'm, I'm trying to pen the sheep, and you know, things are getting hairy, and he's, he, uh, he, he has tension. I mean, look at, I mean, he's intense. He, he'll lay there, and his, he's, he's like this, um, and I, slowly, I'm working that out of him by being quiet and trying to get what I want from him without making him do it but uh so we're at the pen one shoots off the side and he just grabbed it thank you thanks for coming by thanks for the donation I'm like oh cool but like i'll do a little thing here 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 come on come here bro Shh. see see that he he's that's i right there that's i that it can freeze him up. I mean, that other dog would have blown in here. Come here. When I give him a flank here, it's going to be, I pretty much guarantee it'll be tight. We, that was okay. Come by. That was not. Lie down. Lie down. You better listen. Lie down. Lie down. He, he, 
he, he slices his flanks a lot, and it, it can really hurt you. We, we, that's not bad. Lie down. But see that turn in right there? He just hooked in there. I, I don't like that. But right now, through the winter, I was supposed to be working on that with him, and we got snow, and I couldn't work dogs at all, so we... But isn't he pretty to watch him fl work and the way he moves, man? That like, oh, I love that stuff, man. You know what I mean? This is how I'll start to teach a shed, too. We, we, shed is take two from the other two. We, lie down, lie down. I'll do it against here so the sheep can't wrap. Come by, shh, lie down, lie down. We'll see if he can do it. He might grab something here. This is a tent. We, we, lie down. That'll do here. Here, here, one. Lie down, lie down. Good. Here, 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 here. If you want to jazz him up, do this. Come on, come on, come on. So I'll, I'll teach him the shed so the sheep can't wrap around me on the fence line. Um, pretty basic, but you have to get away from that eventually. But I just want them to come to me when they're young, right here, lie down, and then I'll walk them up. Shh. Lie down, lie down. Thank you. Thanks for coming. That was a little grip right there, but, but um, isn't he? I, I love this dog. It's just, you got to keep him free. You got to do this when you get home. Just keep him free, you know? because he wants to lie down, you know? You can't be lazy, what I was saying earlier. You can't be lazy. You gotta go out here and walk. I've done this for ever because it makes the dog good. And I'm willing, to, I'm willing to walk to the end of the earth to make a dog good. You know what I mean? I mean, that's my theory, you know? We lie down, lie down. was asking me earlier how to teach an inside flank and uh, that means like if he's driving walk up walk up if he's driving like that he comes this way in front of you and I just walk with the dog I'll try to get him in the middle where I can do it come by Shh. come by whatever give me sheep dude uh, lie down lie down Walk up, walk up. Let's see. Come, walk. Lie down. Walk. I'll walk with him, but I'll start falling. When they're learning, I'll start falling back as he's taking them away. And he doesn't even realize it if you do it subtly. Because everything inside of him, remember, wants to gather him to me. So I'll just walk up, walk up, walk up. Come by, come by. That's an inside flank. But, but if, if, he's, if the dog's not taking it, I'll just get in his eye with something and then ask him again to kind of break his focus. And, and then if he's going to go behind me, I just stop him and walk him up until he gets in front of me. And then I'll ask again. But uh, anyway, that's just a couple little things. And, and how I put whistles on them is uh, once they're solid with a voice command, when they're going, come by, away walking up, lie down, um, turn backs, you know, when you, we, we, lie down, lie down. When you turn them back to go get another group, we, um, I'll, I'll say the command when they're doing it, I put the whistle to it, and then I start dropping the whistle out. 
or the voice command out, excuse me. He's tired, he's out of shape. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, start, I'll stop saying the voice. And the, it takes a week or two and they start, and then, you know, I, I get it good here. I get everything good right here at hand and then I start lengthening it. Because this dog, I can blow a lie down at 600 yards and he'll hit the ground like he was shot. And you have to be able to do that if you're gonna trial and take she five sheep around a course and you're losing points every time you're outside the line of the, of the gates. So any dog, a lot of dogs can work, but I'm asking a lot of these dogs. And uh, I, I ask a lot, but I give back a lot. I let them be dogs and I let them go sometimes, you know. Just let them be dog. Let them make a mess so I get them back. Because you can't grind and grind and grind on them. You'll, you'll have nothing left. I mean, that's not what I want. I want a dog that wants to do, will die out here with me. That's what I want. So anyways, that's Bray McRae. I hope you liked him. Um, I'll, work, uh, I'll work Gus here a bit, the human torpedo. Well, he's not human, but he's like a torpedo. Anyways, he, he, I've only had him about five months, and we had three months where I couldn't work him. He's three years old, he's trained, but he's trying a lot of things on me right now. <laughs> he's, he's, he's seeing what I'm made of, and uh, I don't know how it's gonna work out with him, but I'll tell you, he has try, and he has heart, and when I, I took him for 30 days, I better not let him off, because Anyway, um, I tried him for 30 days, and what I did was just, like, what I do is just send the dog out, maybe sheep are there, maybe four times that far away. I send them out, and I don't say nothing. I see what they do, and he just brought me sheep. Boom, right here, I went, okay, that's something to start with. Um, but, you know, I don't know the person that trained him that well, so um, I, think he's, I think he's coming along. I just haven't had a lot of time, and whistles are different than my other dogs, so I got four dogs with four different whistles. Maybe next year I'll run two at the same time. I, I've been doing more of just giving you my knowledge than tooling them around here. I mean, I could do that all this time, but if you, if, if you incline to learn and, and train a dog, at least to go get your cattle and all that stuff and put flanks on them, you know. So this is Gus. Gus is, Gus, <laughs> Gus runs like he's shot out of a cannon. And you know, in this deal, what I'm doing, speed is your friend. Like that's why you hear me going shh, shh. Um, He's very fast, steady, 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 steady. So I might have to get, see that flank there, that come by flank, he went, a lot of times it's tight and he, he's so quick that he disrupts the sheep. You know what I mean? He, he, if that first step is here, okay girls, don't get pushy guys. That's, that one, oh no, I don't have the guy out here. Anyway, um, lie down, lie down. Um, if, like him, he, he doesn't have a lot of feel. He doesn't have a lot of feel. But I can put him wherever I want. Um, I kind of like something in between Bray and, and Gus with some feel, but, but this dog, I can put where I want him, and I could probably win more sheepdog trials with him because I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling him where to go a little more, but I really enjoy running a dog that has feel where it's just like, it's like a painting and you're just little flanks and, I mean, it's, it's like a dance and you're just little flanks and, but I think I can get this dog, once I get him off his sheep a little bit, I can get him to start to feel and when they're right behind those sheep and they're just chugging along, I call that in the boot, keep them in the boot, 
once they get out here, it's hard to keep them in the boot. So out here, flanking out wide. So I try to bring them right back, you know, and that dog scoop was hard to, he, his balance was so good, he kept, like I, a cross drive as you drive away and cross drive there, he would, <laughs> we'd be having a great run and he'd be halfway on the cross drive and he'd just flip them, bring them back. And I'd be like, no, you know, but because I kept putting them back so much, Finally, he just, oh, he's just going to put me back there, so I better just stay here. But I know him so good, I'll see him just drop his shoulder to go, and I, I know to hit him with a steady. You know, that's, you can't, timing is everything in this deal. I mean, you can't correct them after they've already sliced the crap out of a flank. You, you have to, you pretty much know he's going to slice it, so you might as well send him and stop him, and I'll stop him, I'll get I like to do all my corrections with, with the sheep because sometimes they don't put, you know, you're, if you're running a dog off and you're just making him, he does, after a while he's like, really? Are we, oh, are we done? You know, like that scoop dog. He made me, you know, I, I make him do stuff and then if I was having a bad day, here's where I'm going to get a little philosophical, sorry, but if I was having a bad day and I go out and work him, and I'd start to take my baloney out on him. He would just give me this look like, really? I mean, it was like he was talking to me. He'd just go, are we really gonna do this today? And I eventually got to the point where I just went, he would scream it so loud that I'd just go, no, we aren't gonna do this today. And I, I'll, I put him away. And I used to have to drive five hours round trip to work my dogs where I kept my sheep. Sometimes I'd drive all that way, start working my dogs, and start acting like an idiot, me. Lie down. <whistles> Sorry. Um, I'd start working my dogs and having a bad day. I'd pack it up 10 minutes in and drive all the way home because I knew it wasn't gonna be productive. It's quality, not quantity. Lie down, lie down. So I'm looking for quality, not quantity, but I'll run him around a little, correct, I'll correct him if I think he's giving me a bad flank or whatever. We'll see what we could do. These sheep are, uh, they're being a little different today than they were in rehearsal, but that's okay. We'll, we'll work with it. But uh, let, me, let, me run, let me run him around a bit and see. I'll try to hit these, these things. When I was doing that figure eight thing, I do that in a fetching, I'll fetch with a, you know, fetch, bring, keeping me the sheep. I'll do that, and it, it makes them be correct because there's a goal. You know, you have, if they're slicing a flank, you're never gonna make it. So I'll get that right, I'll get that right, and then I'll start moving out of it, out of the middle, and not fetching, and I'll do it without me there. And that gives them the inside flank too, that, that drill there. I do this like I'll have panels at home that are like 300 yards out and I'll do that through the panels so I have control of my dog and I mean that's a good one too and, the, and it gets them to where they're listening not just going I'm just going to bring you sheep and I don't care how I do it you know makes them listen a little bit My, my mouth is so dry, I don't know if I can do this whistle, but we'll try it.
So, see how he just gets up and he doesn't, but when I get him off the sheep a little, he starts to feel him a little bit. You know, it's all about feel. What, what is it Tom Dorrance and Bill Dorrance said? Feel is something you can't teach. It's something you have to experience. It's the same for me and the dogs. You know, it's something that you can't, you just have to do it and get the experience. But um, I'm loving re reading a bunch of these horsemen that are natural horsemen or whatever you want to call them. Um, because it's teaching me even more. So, um, but I'll have to probably run this dog stopping him more because he doesn't care, you know, he doesn't want to stop. But, you know, I probably worked him for two months and his whistles are different. I made a couple wrong whistles there, I'll admit it. But, uh, um, but he, I think he's going to be, what he'll do is he's so quick that he'll save panels. You know, when I'm coming to a panel with a sheep here and they're off line over here, I can probably get this close and fix that thing. Where a dog like Bray or Scoop, it's a little harder because they're not as free and quick, you know, because of their eye. So that's what I'm saying. This dog could, me and him might have some really good time. I think we will. He, he was really never got exposed to very much at all. Like he came to my place and I run my dogs on the four wheeler for like 45 minutes every, every day almost, every other day um, to keep him conditioned. And he was afraid, so afraid of that thing. And at about a, two weeks, I didn't make a big deal about it. He was just like, okay, this isn't gonna kill me. And you know, I, I don't know um, some dogs are just sensitive, but sometimes he acts like I've beaten him. I've never touched this dog, you know. You know, he, he's, but, you know, I don't know what happened to him, but I know he might be a darn good sheepdog. Um, so, um, but we'll see, you know. But uh, let's, let's see if maybe we could shed with him. I'm having issues. He wasn't really slicing that come by right now. I don't, maybe, I don't know why. Let's. I might try to see, and I'll show you how I correct that. Come by. And this, he won't slice it here. This is just his outrun. And he's doing mostly on his drive. Steady, steady, hey! And see, he overruns the, the balance sometimes, I notice. Lie down, lie down. See, I did, he's, he's just, I need to get him where he, he's like, I'm in his head a little bit there, where it's like, I, I change his attitude, I guess is what I'm saying. Like, he just wants to get to the sheep. It's like, no, we don't do that. I need, you know, so me and him are going to have a little bit of, tch, 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 so we, I can get him the way I want him and whittle on him a little more. But, you know, I, that's a bit of pressure right there. And what I'm talking about heart, he won't quit me. He won't, I mean, I've had that dog I sold, I'd give that little one of those and he'd be over where I tie him out. And I'm like, I, I love you, buddy, but you got to go somewhere else and I'll get you somewhere else, but I, I, I got to have heart. But anyways, I'm going to try that again. You pretty much know he's going to slice it sometimes, so it's best to just, he's so quick that you give a flank, he's already gone six feet in two point, I mean, he's quick. I mean, can you see that? I mean, he's, he's, are you enjoying this, you guys? I hope so. I'm pouring it out here for you. And you better let Tootie know that you enjoyed it so I can come back, okay? Walk up, walk up, lie down, lie down, come by. Lie down, lie. See how quick that, he had already gone from there to there. You listen to me. 
You listen. That's okay. Well, but the way it started, he went like this. Not, you know what I mean? That threatens the sheep. That I can't until I fix that. I'm going to have a heck of a time getting around a course, and you know the panels are like that far, at you know 200 yards. I got to be able to, you know, I, he he's going to make me pull my britches up, and run him, you know, the way as best I can. But I've got to square that up. Lie down, lie down, walk up, walk up. Here, come on. Walk up, lie down, walk up, walk up. Steady, steady, steady. See when he's off of him, he's feeling him. Lie down, lie down, lie down. Come by. Lie down, lie down. You listen to me. You listen to me. Hey, come by. See, as soon as he's right, pressure's off. That was kind of off contact, but I'll, I'll take it because I know I can get this dog back in there in a heartbeat. I'll try a little shed with him. He tends to come right through and not boom, right on the sheep. Where are you going, buddy? Hey, hey, lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down. I'm doing that for the lie down. Come on, girls, respect me. Could be difficult because they're they're like velcroed together. We'll see. We'll get a single here. That'll do here, Gus. Here. Steady, steady, steady. Good boy, steady. Wait, wait, wait. Here, 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 here. See, he, he overflanks there. But he's so quick. I might have to live with a little of, of that, you know what I mean? And this, man, this is the good stuff, because they got to keep working that head. See that? You know what I mean? This, this is the good stuff if you need to get them. Look, I ought to get out of the way. Here. Good boy. Here, here. Look. Lie down, lie down. Look back. Wee, shh. So anyway, I'm just kind of trying to show you what I do. I mean, there's many roads to the mountain type top, you know. It's just I've I've had a few mentors that Where are you going? You see that? He turned tail on me. I don't know why. See, those are the things that keep me up at night. Why? Why did lie down? This dog is smart. Like you better be right because you're going to have to untangle something if you aren't. Um, so that's why I'm... He, he, I had a good... I heard someone say it. You had a split. And I was like, yeah, I could have taken that right there. Darn it. Anyway, um, he... So like that turning tail, what's that about? I don't know. You know, he maybe too much pressure at some time. I don't know, but he seems to take it pretty well for me. The pressure. I mean, but I, you know, I'm fair. That's one of the things my mentors taught me. One of my main mentors told me, "Be fair, Brian." I remember going to a trial with Scoop, and the cross drive was up this hill, and you had to. Re- it was a lot of pressure, because sheep don't want to go uphill. Some, you know, and I was like, I came off the trial field. I was pissed. And I'm like, he's cheating me. He's cheating me. And uh, there was some people there, and he just said, come here, Brian. I came over, he said, Brian, these dogs don't cheat you. He said, he was trying for you very hard. He said, you are the problem. You didn't teach him something. You didn't fix it. You look at yourself. And, you know, I need that stuff. I need someone to be straight up and say, oh, 
don't come to me and say, oh, he's a wonderful dog. I want to hear the real stuff, like, this is what you need to do to fix it. This is, you know what I mean? I don't want to hear Fluffy is a great dog. I, I want to hear the good stuff, like, give me tools to put in my tool belt. So when I have problems, I can go, oh, yeah, whoosh, whoosh, I got that tool. That's why I'm going to my mentors. I'm going to get more tools that I can use to uh, help the dogs, you know what I mean? But I, I'm really liking this dog, but like I said, I don't have much time with him. So um, we'll see. But, you know, I was doing okay there with his whistles through the course. I was, I was starting to get a little rhythm there, but I like to run a dog that it, the, it's just like not yelling. I don't like to yell. When I'm on the trial course, you'll know, very rarely hear, hear me yell because that's not the place. If you show up and you haven't trained your dog, don't be yelling at him out there. You didn't do your job. Like, do your job. And, the, you know, they're, they're dogs. They're not like IBM computers and we just go on their head and go, tch, 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 you know what I mean? They're, so, but what I love is just like it's a feel thing. And, and when a run's going, that I don't even have to look at the scoreboard when I have a good one. I know it was... It doesn't really matter at that point. I just hit the golf shot that's going to keep me coming back. You know, when one just feels so magical and the dog's taking every single whistle and it's just like, man, that's, whew, that gets me up. At, that, that's what gets me up in the morning is to have those beautiful runs. Um, so I hope I haven't bored you guys to death and you're having fun. I mean, I'm trying to give you as much information as... Like I said, I sat there last night, sat and laid in bed, and thoughts were just through my head. And it's like, Brian, just go out there and spirit, show them what you know and share your philosophies with them. And, and uh, if someone gets one grain, like when I go to a clinic, if I get two things from it that kind of stick, it's worth it to me. And then because my mind is open, I'll hear other things that later I'll go, oh, that's what he was saying, you know? So, I mean, I, I just, a lot of the clinics I go to, I'll be sometimes the only guy. I don't, you know, just the only guy there. And, and, and this one clinician said to me, he said, he said, you're gonna be successful. He said, because you leave your ego out of it. And I try to, we all have ego, but you know what I mean? I really try to not, you know what I mean? And it's, it's served me fairly well. Like I said, I still have a goal to achieve. And uh, I'm just, I don't know if I'll take it, but, but I'm claiming it. I write it down all the time. I am a national champion. I am a national champion. Um, when I, I, I like a lot of mind stuff, like training my mind. Um, what I'll also do is put post-it notes on my, in my car. I am a quiet handler. I am a quiet handler. You guys could be going, I'm, a qui I'm quiet with my horse. I'm quiet with my horse. Um, it's funny, it gets in here. And then before you do it, you think about it. I was just at a dog trial, a friend of mine was all pissed off. He goes, man, I lose it. I just lose it mentally. And I, my, my anger, when I just do one thing wrong, I said, I said, and he starts yelling and carrying on with his dog. I told him, you do me a favor, dude. You go home and for 30 days, I want you to tell yourself at night that you're a quiet, fair handler 30 times before you go to bed. And, and then tell me what happens at the end of the 30 days. I want to hear. You know, I bet you he got quieter because it became his subconscious mind. That's how I quit smoking cigarettes. I just kept saying I'm a non-smoker, non-smoker. I quit like 20, what is it, 21 days to make or break a habit? And I quit. And I was like, whoa, this is powerful. Anyway, sorry to go off on you like that, but anyway, come on, Gus. Come here, good boy. Come on, come on. Shh, shh. So I want to always keep the speed in them. In this dog, I'm not going to have to worry about that. Shh. Whoa, see what I mean? He's so quick, he can't keep his feet. And I've been working on him too. Oh, this could be fun, ring around the rosy. Come by, shh. Get him over here. Hey, hey! Shh. 
Lie down. Lie down. Come by. I'm going to see if I can square them up. He must be tired. He's not even. I want to see him. Hey, Gus, come on. Shh, shh. Hey. He don't even know where I am. See that? Come by. Come by. See that turn in right there? That's, I mean, it wasn't bad. Come, come on, shh. Light him, light him. See, he, he's being pretty good right here. The, that other dog, Bray, was like first step. We, shh, we. Steady, steady. Here, here. Light him, light him, light him. We, we. Steady, steady. Steady, and then reminding of, of what steady means. Steady means no, not going to head. Steady, steady. See, once I get in his head, he's pretty nice. Come by. Anyways, I think, is that fine? I mean, nobody's even paying attention. Cool. I'll just, I'll just stay out here and pour some more out. But anyway, I lie down. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, I'm trying to share these incredible, these dogs, you know, like people that own border collies in the crowd know what I'm talking about. There's, there's nothing. It's like a truck in a Ferrari, you know? And I remember the first dog trial I went to, I had a McNabb and uh, he was like driving a truck like driving a RV in the wind. You're just trying to keep it on the road. And I went to this trial and I could never teach him his flanks. He was too hard headed. I would have had to beat him to death and he still wouldn't have done it. So I went to my first trial and we got around the course. It was like a fetching course and which is easier. And I get him and I pin him and I lit. I was new to it, you know, and I, I just hit my knee and hugged him and was like, I had tears in my eyes and the judge was just like, God, that's refreshing. You know what I mean? And, but I watched a border collie working and I said, oh man, I got to get one of those. And that's when I got Scoop and he, I bought him off the internet. You know, my friends are all, let's breed this one to this one. Let's breed this one. And this stuff, I mean, I don't, one of my friends gets so mad at me because I don't know the pedigree of all the, I, I watch a dog and I go, I just watch a dog and if I like it and I think I can make, that's what I base my thing on. Maybe hips a little bit, but I just want a good dog and I don't care if it came from a UFO, you know? That, that scoop dog of mine, people, when I was at the national finals, they're like, who is this guy? Like, I'm a surfer, I grew up surfing. That's kind of why I have a feel, I have feel is, when you're riding a wave, well, for one, some of the waves I rode had consequences. So if you made a mistake, you could be, you could drown basically. And I, I almost did a couple times, but I've traveled all over surfing and um, um, it's a lot of feel and little, you know, if you're trying to stay in the tube, I don't want to get, tank, but it could just be a couple fingers in the wave to slow you up enough to stay in there. And trust me, in there is like the coolest. That's, a, that's what hooked me on that until physically I couldn't ride a shortboard anymore. I mean, I could, but I was kind of competitive about it. So, I, you know, and I'm not a longboard guy. I'm not just like a, but anyway, different tangent. But, but, it, but the feel thing, I understood. I'd never been around livestock. 
but common sense helps. And I would just, I just, I understood it. And I remember my trainer said, normally I have to give people stock handling um, lessons and how to, and she said, you just got it. She said, I don't know how, but I said, it, I think it was from surfing and, and just a demeanor that's relaxed, you know what I mean? But anyways, I'm so glad to get to share my wonderful dogs with you. And I hope to come back next year and the year after and share them more with you and maybe bring another puppy. Maybe I'll have dude still and dude will be going through this course like a Ferrari, you know what I mean? So thank you very much and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Folks, how about it one more time for Brian White along with Scoop and Rio. Come on, guys.